I kind of stumbled into moons a little bit by chance, and that was really because I was writing a paper on the um, the transit. I was calculating the transit duration. So how long does it take a planet to transit its star? Mm-hmm. And I was trying to come up with a closed form solution for this problem. It's just a geometry problem. I'd made the first attempt of doing this with an eccentric orbit. Before then, everyone had just done it with a circular orbit, which seemed reasonable because the planets in the solar system were mostly circular. So everyone assumed ex- exoplanets would be the same way, right. but we were starting to get hints that actually exoplanets can be quite eccentric. So I, I generalized the calculation. And then I think the referee asked me, or maybe I was thinking in my head at some point, like, what could make this calculation be wrong? Like, where would where would the one of my assumptions be false? And one of the assumptions was, you know, the this Keplerian orbit. Mm. One way to get a non-Keplerian orbit would be if something was wobbling it. And so that's where I started down this path of thinking about the moons and how that would change things. And that got me excited because whenever you, you know, find a way to basically prove your idea is wrong, that becomes a way of detecting that thing. Right. And it's really just an extension. So there's A looking for a flaw in your theory to pick up on that piece of like, this is a new thing we can look for. But then there's also analogizing. So you can take the analogy of, okay, we are detecting lots of planets by looking at wobbling stars. That was the prime primary method at the time people were detecting planets. And so this is really just an extension of that. It's saying, well, let's just take that same principle and apply it on a smaller scale and see what see what falls out. So yeah, there's the there's you know I, I really love talking to colleagues in other fields and other disciplines, cosmologists, but also you know totally other disciplines like chemistry and biology because you you hear about the way they are thinking about problems and you see so often in science that the the way problems are solved are transferable. Maybe you change the scale, maybe you shift an axis, but it's it's a lot of the same things being discovered multiple times which are really just mirrors of each other.